Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, João Santos. I'd love to be in San Sebastian with you. I've been there quite a few times, and I enjoy the wonderful view you have from Cursal to the sea, and uh, also, you know, in the evenings going to the Cidrerias to have some nice uh, meals and uh, some nice drinks is not possible and I will try in the next uh, few minutes to give an idea of what we are doing in Europe with the centers of vocational excellence. You heard yesterday in the morning Manuela Geleng giving you a big perspective of what we are doing in Europe in terms of skills development. Then you heard Chiara uh, talking about our ideas on uh, vocational education and training and coordinating with the member states, our strategy on vocational education and training. And now I will give you an overview of a very concrete initiative we have, which is the Centers of Vocational Excellence. Now, before going into my presentation, I'd like to thank the Basque authorities, Inigo, Ricard, Jorge Revalo, and many others in your team that have been helping the European Commission to develop this concept. And in this picture, you can see the kickoff meeting that took place in San Sebastian uh, in the beginning of this week. And these uh, people that you see there are the representatives of 12 pilot projects in centers of vocational excellence that have already been working for around two years. And you can see that they've taken excellence to a new level. You can see some of them in that picture that are levitating in the air. You can see Paolo Nardi with his hands crossed and he's in the air. And, uh, um, uh, Peter Mor ha estado al aire y Peter Morman está hablando después de mí también. Es un grupo maravilloso de personas que se han juntado y entre ellos han intercambiado ideas y experiencia para convertir la excelencia profesional en una realidad. Así que muchas gracias a las autoridades vascas por acoger a estas personas y por haber haber organizado esta reunión inicial. Antes de pasar a mi presentación, quisiera compartir con vosotros un vídeo muy bonito del sistema de formación profesional vasco, que está detrás de lo que estamos haciendo en la Unión Europea. Así que vamos a proyectar el primer vídeo. Green. People say that our vocational training is green. It's true. We're green because our objectives include sustainability, nature and caring for the environment. However, we're not just green. We're also blue because we support marine life and careful use of water. White is the foundation of the gastronomy sector and upon it we can combine all the colors of the rainbow. We have assimilated all the colors of wood because our work covers construction through to maintenance and development of ecosystems. When it comes to the strength of the sun and energy, we combine red and yellow. People also say that orange is the color of technology. We incorporate innovation and technology in all of our processes. We could even be pink or purple. Our projects could use the entire color palette. At the heart of this colorful vocational training center are its people. Our labor of love is the well-being and future of people built upon sustainability. I like this uh, video very much because, uh, you know, although it addresses the key challenges we have and also the, the need for VET to be, uh, you know, contributing to sustainability, you saw uh, on agriculture, you saw on the, uh, on the oceans as well, it ends with a very fundamental message, which is very much related to the theme we are discussing today, which is humankind, that we are serving 
people that at the end of the day we do all these reforms, we do this, all this modernization of vocational education and training, but with people at its center. And this is not only a bus concern, but very much how we also see vocational education and training at the European level. Now, just uh, now I'm going to the, the presentation I wanted to share with you. Uh, I understand that there's a sort of a six second delay between what I'm living here and what is the reality in, uh, in uh, the bus country right now with this transmission so if there's any uh, technical problem it's not that I've fallen asleep or whatever it's just that there's this delay because I'm physically in Brussels and you are in uh, San Sebastian now going to the presentation I'd like to start by giving the bigger picture and saying that <clears throat> you know in Europe we have this big digital and green transitions that we are working on. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, big initiatives, policy initiatives, in order to pursue these big objectives. But underpinning all this, we have the European pillar of social rights, which gives a social dimension to all our big initiatives in whatever sector, be it agriculture, various industries. In the end of the day, this social dimension is fundamental, and this is very much in the heart of the DG where I work in DG employment. And as part of the social dimension, you might know that in 2017, we, the European Pillar of Social Rights was proclaimed. It has 20 principles that uh, give a body to this idea of the social dimension. And the first of these principles is one on education, training, and lifelong learning giving everyone the right to quality and inclusive education. I think this is fundamental because you'll see that in all the various initiatives that we've had when we're talking about the European uh, Pillar of Social Rights, the European Skills Agenda, the European Education Area, the Industrial Policy, this idea of the social dimension is fundamental. And of course, besides the policy initiatives that I've just uh, mentioned, we also need to make sure that we, it's not only about talk, but there's also money and there's also funding to support us. And at the European level, we've been working with the member states, obviously, with the various institutions, and there are a set of financial instruments. I'm not going to go through all of them, of course, but just mention maybe Erasmus+, Plus, which is a fundamental one, and which is also funding this initiative on centers of vocational excellence, the European Social Fund, and, of course, the Recovery and Resilience Facility, which puts at the disposal of the member states very significant amounts of funding in order to fund the uh, objectives and the challenges in each country. So, to give you the big picture, centers of vocational excellence are part of this wider context. We are contributing to this wider context of a strategic vision for the future of Europe with policy initiatives, with the Green Deal, for example, but also with funding instruments that support these dreams. Now, going to the centers of vocational excellence, I would ask once again if in San Sebastian you can please put the second video, which is an animation video explaining what we want from the centers of vocational excellence. Can you please put the video?
Good. So I hope that you, you got the message that this initiative is about creating skills ecosystems. It's making sure that the education and training system is attentive to what is the reality, the economic and social reality in each region and is capable of responding to those challenges and contributing to achieve those regional objectives, be it of you know, uh, general regional development, social inclusion, smart specialization strategies, cluster strategies, and so on. And by doing so, the VET system cannot live in isolation. It has to be uh, uh, very much linked to what are the economic and social realities in the, in the region. It has to work with universities of applied science, research centers, companies, chambers, industrial associations, policy makers, for example, public employment service as well. So the idea is that the skills ecosystem, to be viable, to be real, it needs to bring all of these partners together. Now, when we were uh, coming up with the initiative, we tried to look at good experiences all over Europe, because quite often we don't have to invent anything, we've just got to see what is working and then replicate this. And of course, the, the, the Basque example inspired us in this process. But I would say that centers of vocational excellence, in order to exist, there are three key success factors that have to be present. The first is what I already alluded to, is a close link between what we are providing in the education and training field and what are the regional development strategies? What are the innovation strategies? So we have to be not only attentive, but work closely with all the partners in order to be in tune with what are the big strategic objectives in a region. The second one is strong and enduring partnerships. So partnerships that exist, that are embedded in the skills ecosystem and don't happen just because the vet center spoke with this or that company occasionally. They have to be part of it. Companies have to be part of the solution for skills ecosystems. And the third one is integration of activities, that the VET system is not only providing a qualification, a diploma after three years of study, but is working with SMEs, for example, understanding what are their needs for innovation, working on applied research projects, working with innovation hubs, with companies, so that we understand what are the real problems out there, that the teachers and the learners in the VET system can work in these real world problems, and by doing so, are better prepared to respond what are the skilled needs in the economy. So, and of course, we also looked at how does this translate concretely? What are the activities that, for example, Technica and the vet centers in the Basque country are doing, which allows them to reach to this level of excellence? And we identified 25 activities. I mean, they are not the only solution. There can be other activities. But we identified these 25 that we are willing to fund and support the entities that want to work on them. And we've, we've clustered these activities under three big pillars. The first one is teaching and learning. And here you see, I'm not going to get into all the details, but you know, things like innovating in the curricula, innovating in teaching and learning methodologies, using digital uh, uh, tools in order to do it, providing not only young people with the initial qualification for the labor market, but also working on upskilling and reskilling, on quality assurance. So these are all activities we cluster in teaching and learning. But we've also identified activities on cooperation and partnerships. I already mentioned, for example, the working on applied research with the SMEs, working with companies in order to have access to equipment that vocational centers by themselves cannot have, working on apprenticeship schemes. So these are all activities that we cluster under cooperation and partnerships. And the third cluster has to do with governance and funding. And this is making sure that we co-create skills ecosystems with all the necessary uh, uh, partners, with trade unions, with companies, chambers, and so on. And of course, we can have gigantic dreams, but if, if we don't have, have the financial instruments to support them, we're not going far. So it is very important also within this context that we discuss what is the role for public funding, what is the role for private funding, what is the role for individuals to fund also in terms of upskilling and reskilling. So these are all elements that we want these centers of vocational excellence to provide responses to. Now, the, the concept, the way we've developed it, 
has action at two levels. Ultimately, what we want is that the centers, the vocational centers at the local region are in tune with uh, what are the realities and the needs and are working with all these partners that I mentioned. But of course, if you only look at your own belly button and don't see what is happening in the whole world and learn from each other, we are missing the big picture. And that's where the transnational element comes in and that's where Erasmus Plus comes in because you know that Erasmus Plus has this particularity of bringing partners together from all over the world. We try to bring people to share experiences, to learn from each other. And I mean, if I can use a motto to describe this, the idea is to think global, so understand what is happening out there, and then to translate this into the local realities and act local. So this is the main idea or philosophy behind this European uh, initiative. Now, uh, the, the way we've devised, we've uh, come up with the initiative, uh, this slide is a little bit complicated, there's a lot of text there, but I'll try to summarize it very quickly. The initiative will count with the support of EU funding, Erasmus Plus, in the next seven years of 400 million euros. This is grants that we give, 400 million euros for the projects that want to pursue this work and to finance 100 networks in the next seven years. The applicants can can be any uh, uh, organization in the Erasmus Plus program countries, which is basically the 27 member states plus the European Economic Area countries and uh, Turkey. Partners can come from any country of the world. So Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, uh, China, from anywhere, and we've had that experience in the past, can be partners in the project to the extent that they bring an added value to the project. To give this dimension of business education partnerships, the partners have to include in each of the four program countries, which is the minimum required, at least four countries have to be included in each project, and from each of those countries we want at least one industry representative or company and at least one vet provider. Experience has shown us that the projects that are being submitted have much more than this minimum, but in any case, these are the minimums. And the grant we give is 4 million euros for each project lasting for four years. So we want sustainability and we provide the funding for up to four years. Now, this graph simply shows you how the funding we have available is going to evolve over the next seven years. In the first years, 2019-2020, we launched some pilot projects which are now uh, working. And in the next seven years, we'll have substantial funding growing over the years because there will be accumulated experience. And then we want to share this with the new applicants as well. But we'll be financing 100 coves in the next uh, uh, few years. These are, I've already mentioned the pilot projects and you remember the first slide with these colleagues levitating. So these people are managing these 12 projects that you see there. The first uh, box is of the projects we approved in 2019. The second one is of the projects approved in uh, 2020. If you want more details, you've got the link there. You can go and fetch it. Now, this is to finalize my presentation, just to tell you, give an overview of what kind of projects submitted applications in the 2021 call. As I said, there will be calls for projects every single year from 2021 to 2027. We are currently with the executive agency uh, in Brussels analyzing these applications. We had 84 projects being submitted, which is quite a record. We've never had so many. The budget requested is almost 300 million euros. Remember, I told you that for seven years we have 400 million, and just the first year we had almost 300 million euros of request. A very interesting element that I wanted to share with you because I know many people from all over the world, I think 155 countries are listening to us today. Um, we had applicants coming from 55 countries all over the world. You see there Russia, China, Mozambique, Cabo Verde, uh, and 27 of those are EU member states, and 28 are countries from outside. Europe. And this shows you the enormous potential of this initiative for internationalization of vocational education and training because it brings partners from all over the world, as you see, all the countries that are there, which is, I think, one of the ways of achieving the objectives we have at European level of making VET uh, uh, internationally in terms of what we learn and what we exchange with everyone. On this slide, I'm showing you the kind of partners that we are attracting for these projects. You see, of course, and this is the main idea, that vocational education and training institutes are clearly leading the number of applicants, but we have partners, you know, 
high education institutions, we have public employment services, social partners, chambers, everyone participating in this, which also shows that the, the, the initiative has the potential of taking that out of its traditional bubble of just providing qualifications. And it's really reaching out to the wider world and getting everyone involved in order to create these skills ecosystems. And remember I told you 25 activities that we propose for the projects to work on. And of course, not all projects work on the same activities, depending on the reality and the needs in the countries of the, the, uh, the participants. There might be different needs. But what we see is of these 84 applicants that we have this year, that the gross majority, the five top activities that are chosen, first of all, is expanding the offer, not only for young people to get the initial qualification, but also working very much on upskilling and reskilling. The second one is bringing all the stakeholders together, making sure that we have everyone on board in order to create these skills ecosystems. The third one is innovating in teaching and learning, in the methodologies, in the curricula. The fourth is on business education partnerships, and you'll see Peter Mormon, he'll tell you much more about it. He's the expert in this field. And the fifth one, not that the other activities are uh, not taken on board, but the, the five most important, the fifth one is creating innovation hubs and technology diffusion center and working on applied research projects. Now, this is the end of my presentation, but before I finish, I'd like to show you a video of one of the 12 Cove pilot projects we, we are funding. I like them all, obviously. I'm, I'm working with them, and I know the project leaders of all of them, but I'd like to show you this video. I have, I have 11 other videos that I could share with you, but I think this one, I selected this one because I think it, it very much links with what is the theme of the conference of humankind, of putting people at the center of everything we do. And quite often we think that excellence is in contradiction with inclusion, but I think exactly the opposite. By being inclusive, we have better chances of being excellent. So I finish the intervention here. Once again, a big thank you to Georgia Revalo and all the Basque authorities, to Inigo, to, to uh, 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 Ricard, for all the support and all the collaboration you've had with us over the years. And I wish you a tremendous success for this event, and I hope to meet you in uh, the Basque country next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>